Welcome back to part three of our series where we are learning how to parse XBRL documents that contain all the wonderful information that we typically seek from a financial filing. In our previous video, we gave you basically the initial framework for being able to systematically navigate through each document. So at this point, we're gonna be navigating through the calculation uh, XBRL document, definition, label, and then at some point near the end, we're gonna be doing the HTMM 10Q uh, XML file. And so it's very important that we do this in a systematic way. It's very easy for our scripts to break if we're not careful because we're gonna often encounter elements that we don't necessarily intend to. So we just have to make our script a little bit more general so that way we're not being too biased towards any particular type of script, or sorry, element, but if we do choose to do that, then we just have to keep in mind that we're not gonna necessarily get all the information back. So picking up where we left off, we have now created an iterator that's gonna loop through each child element of the main element. So we're gonna get the main element and any child element that exists inside of it. So that's pretty useful because now we have basically all the content that we need, but now we gotta get the attributes. And so getting the attributes is you know, nothing too crazy, but we wanted to make sure it's clean. We wanna make sure that it's uh, useful and helpful. And so part of that, it means we're gonna to have to create some labels. And so part of that means split the label. What do you mean, Alex? Element underscore split label. We're gonna take our child element. It has a tag component. If you print the element split label as it is now, you will find that it's not super helpful. We always have this stupid little namespace thing and I really don't like it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that and I just want this little guy or I just want that or just that, right? So simple, we're gonna do the split and then we're gonna split along that curly bracket. Once we've done that, we now have a namespace component and we have a label component. So if you want the namespace component, be my guess. We'll call the first one namespace. That will be our element split, element split label. That's the first element in our list because remember when we split it, it just returns a list. And then the second one is gonna be our actual label. And so that's gonna be element split label one. So with this one, if we now print it out, what is it gonna look like? Is it gonna be something a little bit more, what we would call friendly? That's a lot more friendly. So that's something I can work with. Okay, so now that we have a label, we're gonna ask a really simple question. Is it one of the labels I care about? So split the label, sorry, here we're gonna get the label parts. After we do that, we're gonna ask a simple question. Is this the label we want? How do we do that? If label in parse. So if it's in this list, take it. Otherwise, I don't care about it. And I talked about last video, the ones I don't care about because we basically saw they don't really tell us anything. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define the item type label. So we'll call it element type label. Really what I'm doing here is I'm gonna take that file name space label. I'm gonna do plus underscore and then plus label. And we'll print that element, um, what is it, element type Label. So what does this give us? At this point, really all I'm doing is I'm just building the parts that are useful. So I'm just building the information I need to hopefully store this in a systematic way. I do, At a high level, I define everything by the category of document. So I wanna be able to identify the ones that came from calculation link. I wanna be able to define the ones that came from definition link and so on. So this is my label that tells me basically where it came from. Now that I've done that, we're gonna define our, what we would call our, our dictionary list. So initialize smaller dictionary, and we'll call this dictionary storage. That's an empty dictionary to begin with. 
But what we'll do is we'll take that Dix storage thing, and then we will take item underscore type. And then from here, we'll put in our element type label. So now we say in the smaller dictionary, I can tell you it belongs to the label. And then this was the label that I found um, with that particular label element. Now, technically, I probably could have sp uh, split this up and just kept it on its own. But for right now, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Okay, from here, grab all the attribute keys. So we'll call this keys and then we'll call this child element dot keys. And from here, if you look at it, you will see in a second, once I print it, I'll print cow keys. I think I should have called this something different, but now it's going to return all the attributes, which is a list of the attributes. And then um, some of them have information, some of them don't. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to say, okay, for each attribute, do something, right? So we're going to say for key in cal keys, print if that little squirrely bracket thing is in the key because it's not always going to be in the key then create a new key which is basically the old key but we're going to split it and then we're going to split it along that squirrely bracket and then i just want the portion that doesn't contain the squirrely bracket so the part that basically comes after it and then we're going to take our our dictionary storage item we're going to add that as our new key and it's going to equal our child element. And then we're gonna call our attribute. And then from here, sorry, child element attrib, and then key. And so from here, we've now uh, basically put it into our dictionary. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, otherwise, take our dictionary storage item have it equal the old key and then have that uh, attribute. So basically take the attribute that is associated with that key. So this will kind of make more sense when you just print it out. So from here, if I print out the, the storage component, what is it gonna start looking like? So at this point, I have an item type, and then I have my label location. And really what it did is it gave me everything, right? So it gave me all the elements, or sorry, all the attributes that belong to that particular element type. So at this point, I just actually got everything we wanted from it with a single loop. That's really nice. <laughs> that didn't take very long at all. So from here, now what we're going to start doing is going through this process of actually organizing the information. So we're going to say if element type type label equals underscore label underscore label, um, we're going to basically start building our master key. Now you might be asking, why did you choose label element as your truth key, right? Why not calculation? Why not definition, right? I mean, there's other ones out there. Well, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. Well, my experience, at least working with it, was label seemed to be the most comprehensive. Now, I cannot say that with 100% certainty, so I am still experimenting with this portion a little bit. Um, I am trying to think about, well, what is the most efficient way of doing this without having to necessarily loop through every document and then every, you know, I'm trying to think about how to do this in a systematic way that, you know, does the coverage that it needs to. So right now label so the label document is basically proving to be the best source of truth but if that changes i will gladly update the code um, but for right now it's basically kind of just being that one so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to uh, call key underscore store that just equals the dictionary storage and then we're going to call item because <clears throat> it's going to have an item right because Look, I mean, if we have, uh, where is it? We might not see it because it's all the way up at the top if I can't do it, but 
item to label label, right? So if it's label label, then grab the actual label itself. So I'm grabbing basically this guy right here. It might be hard to see, but this is gonna serve as my key. So grab the label key. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my master key. So create master key. That will basically take my master key and it will equal key to store, replace the label underscore. So basically replace that first portion right here. And then that will basically give you the portion that we need for right now. <clears throat> and then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna split the key. So take um, split the master key. And so we're gonna say um, t -t 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 label underscore split equals master key dot split underscore. Okay, so now <clears throat> what we'll see, we'll see a bunch of these. Um, we'll see the basically that split version of it. So I'm gonna put this down at the bottom. FYI, you're gonna see a bunch. Where? Oh, sorry, I forgot to put my replace. And basically, um, when I replace it initially, I just wanna remove it. Okay, so here, we've now split each key. We have basically the text component, and now we have the actual key itself. So <clears throat> this is where things get a little bit interesting because I'm debating whether this is the actual master key or if it's the combination of both of these. So. Again, that's going to take just a little bit more research to kind of answer that, I would say, confidently. But for right now, what I do is I create my gap key. So create create my gap ID. So we'll call this one gap underscore ID. That takes my old label split, which is starting from zero. I'm going to add a colon. And remember why that colon's important? Remember when we were looking in the actual HTM, HTM file that we couldn't search on the, um, <clears throat> the hyphen, we actually had to search on the colon? That's why, this is why I have to do this. Because if I wanna search the other one, I have to know um, the actual element name. So if we look now, we're gonna have our gap IDs, but you can tell that it's obviously um, there's duplicates. And so part of it is we are now gonna start um, inserting it into a dictionary. So just for time's sake, I am gonna copy some of this over just because for the most part, I can just explain it and you'll pretty much understand exactly what I'm doing because it's just storing stuff. It's not really doing any kind of thing fancy. Basically what I start out with doing is I take my storage values one, right? So I take this big old dictionary that I, uh, start it up here and I start adding to it, right? So I first add the master key. So you're gonna create the storage values and it's gonna have basically all the master keys. And so when you do that, now you're gonna have a master key and you're gonna have another dictionary that's associated with it. And then for that dictionary, I create the label ID, the location ID, the US gap ID, the US gap value, and then the element type label. And then down here, I create my second basically container, which is gonna be just purely for my gap values. Now, probably somewhere down the road, I will merge these two where we don't have these separate components. Because right now it is a little bit, I would say awkward sometimes because naturally you look at the information, you're like, this seems weird, right? Like it seems like it should just easily match up. Um, and it probably does, but it just, I haven't really figured out that easy, like intuitive way of doing it. So for right now, I'm keeping them separate. And then after I basically create my quote unquote mini dictionary that belongs to my bigger one, um, I add this uh, to my, well, I don't add that one to my list, but basically I take my dictionary that was up here. I add that one along with the file namespace. So this is basically getting everything I need to kind of start building the process of actually uh, storing the information. So ultimately, this is what that storage quote unquote values is gonna look like. Again, it's a lot. It's 
kind of hard to see because it's just so much information, but I'll, no. So you can see that we have for each master key, we have all the information that's associated with it and then all the values. So we've now basically systematically organized our storage values. What about the gap one? How does that one look? Let's take a look. The US gap one's relatively the same. So we have our gap ID, we have the ID, and then we have our master ID. So ideally I should be able to quote unquote <clears throat> um, tie back. This one was a little bit, I would say, not necessary because inherently if the key's in there, it's not, it shouldn't be in there. But for right now, I'm kind of just keeping it as is because it's working, but this is kind of unnecessary. But if we wanted an easy way where, yeah, no, even then it wouldn't really make sense. I mean, I probably could just get rid of it right now, but I'm not gonna do it. But, um, but yeah, so that's our storage gap one. Let's take a look at our storage list one. So we've got gap values and then this like storage list one, which is basically taking um, everything, right? And so with this one, it's basically taking all the information and it's putting it into a list. So right now, it's just kind of organizing it. Um, it's not necessarily saying what it's gonna be used for yet. Some of it we're gonna dump right away after we get everything. Other stuff we might try to match it up um, down the road and stuff like that. I'm still kind of experimenting and seeing like what's really the best approach, but I think for right now, we've got kind of our way of getting the information. It's like, great, now that you have it, like how do you organize it? Well, that's kind of up for debate, right? So with that, let me check the time really quick. And we'll cut it. Yeah, we'll just cut it here. All right, so for right now, um, if you have any questions about kind of the continuation of the parsing process, feel free, put it down below. Um, you might go, Alex, that doesn't make any sense. And you're probably right. Um, there might be a better way to organize this, but I think for right now, it's doing the job that it needs to. I think ideally what I would love to see is somehow matching these two up right from the get-go um, or just making it where it's an easy access point when I'm parsing the actual, um, what is it, the actual gap component, but I don't know. I just, part of it is like, you know, once you start going down that, then it just starts getting really messy and I don't like that. But I mean, if that's the way, that's the way. This is the way. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, in our next video, we're gonna parse our wonderful HTML document and then we will uh, dump all the information to our CSV file. So we'll see you in the next video.